everybody, it's Professor Williams, and today we're going to conduct a hypothesis test for a proportion, and we're going to use the critical value approach. A researcher claims that at least 67% of Canadian geese in his region fly south for the winter. He randomly selects 65 geese during the summer and finds that 45 of them fly south in the winter. If we set alpha at 0.05, is this scientist or researcher's claim or belief warranted? So we're going to get the information that we need out of the question. So we had a sample size of 65, and we had x, or the number in our sample that possessed the characteristic we were interested in, was 45. The population proportion, or believed population proportion, is 67%. And for a proportion, we also need q. And we know that's 0.33 because P plus Q always equals 1. So let's set up our null and alternative hypothesis. So the hypothesized value of the proportion is 67%. Now we need the sign for our statements. And the scientist claims that at least 67%, so at least tells us greater than or equal to. Since HO and HA are mathematical opposites, the opposite of greater than or equal to is less than. I also knew to put this greater than or equal to up here in my null, because remember, there's never an equal to sign or any version of the equal to sign in an alternative hypothesis. So when I look at my alternative hypothesis for the direction of my test, I see I'm less than, which is my arrow, which tells me I'm going to run a one-tailed left test. In order to use the critical value approach, I need two things. I need to calculate a test statistic and a critical value. So to calculate the test statistic for the test of a proportion, I need a z. And so in order to get z, I've got to start with p hat. p hat is simply those out of our sample that possessed the characteristic of interest and that was our 45 out of 65, which gave us a sample proportion of 0.692. We're going to use that 0.692 down here to calculate our z, which will be our test statistic. I'm going to take my sample proportion minus my hypothesized population proportion, and then I'm going to divide it by this standard error of the mean. So I'm going to take 0.67 times 0.33. I'm going to multiply those two together. Then I'm going to divide them by 65, at which point I can take the square root of the whole thing. And when I do that piece of math, I come up with a calculated z-score or a test statistic of 0.38. So now I need a critical value for a one-tailed left test using z, where my alpha is equal to 0.05. And we know that that is a standard value of z equal to 1.645. But because I'm running a one-tailed left test, that critical value has to be negative. So here I am with my curve. I've identified my critical value, that negative 1.645 here. And we know that if we were to get a calculated test statistic more extreme than our critical value, that our decision would be to reject HO. As long as my calculated test statistic is in this area of the curve, then my decision will be do not reject. So I calculated my test statistic to be just 0.38, which is well um, out of the rejection region. So our decision will be do not reject HO. There is insufficient evidence at this point to support the researcher's claim that at least 67% of geese fly south in the winter. As always, I hope that you found this useful, and thanks for watching.